Okay, so do you think you know how to answer this question correctly? Well, hopefully you do. And the question is, is this a right triangle? So what is a right triangle? Well, a right triangle has a perfect square. In other words, this angle right there is 90 degrees, and it's indicated by this little square in the corner. Okay, but we don't know if this is a right triangle or not, but we do have enough information here in order to determine the right answer. So let's take a look at the problem. So here is our triangle. This side of the triangle is six feet, three inches. This side right here is three feet, six inches, and this side is four feet, nine inches. Now feel free to use a calculator and put your answer into the comment section, but uh, obviously the correct answer here is gonna be yes, it is a right triangle or no, it is not. So try to justify your answer. In other words, if it's not a right triangle, tell me why. And if it is a right triangle, tell me why. All right, so I'm gonna to get to the complete solution to this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so what is the answer? Is this a right triangle? Well, no, it is not. So hopefully you took a guess, and if your guess is no, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm just feeling lucky today, and I took a wild guess. Well, hey, you got it right. But again, we want to justify the conclusions here, and I'll get into that, into the solution. But uh, if you got this right, and if you know why uh, it is not a right triangle, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, you get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence. Uh, for your knowledge of right triangles, but there's kind of another part of that of this problem, and that is working with units of measure. Okay, so there's a couple, a matter of fact, there's even an additional aspect to this problem, so nice job. And if you're not quite sure whether, in fact, this is a right triangle or not, well, let's go ahead and get into it right now. Okay, so again, as I indicated, a right triangle is a triangle where one of the angles, and this looks right, looks like a perfect square right here, right? So it just looks that way, but you can't say, hey, it is a right triangle because it looks like a right triangle. That's not justification enough, but a right triangle means that this angle here is 90 degrees, okay? Now, when we have right triangles in geometry, well, we have a special property that occurs, and we're gonna be using this particular uh, property to solve this problem, and that is the following. Every right triangle has this relationship, and it's called the Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. This is a must-know formula. Okay, so here is a triangle, and if this is a right triangle, it means that this angle down here is 90 degrees. So A, B, and C are the lengths of a right triangle. Now, C will always represent the length of the longest side of the right triangle. It's opposite of where the 90 degree angle is at. Okay, so it's gonna be opposite this way, but it's pretty, easily to, uh, pretty easy to identify because it's the longest side, so that's always C. Now, the other sides can be A or B. Okay, now we have something called the Pythagorean Theorem, and this is critically important to remember. So it goes this way, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. These are the lengths of the right triangle, okay? Now the best way to kind of uh, really understand the Pythagorean theorem is to see a simple example. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So a uh, right triangle or a triangle with sides three, four, five is in fact a real right triangle, okay? So this is a real deal. This angle right here is 90 degrees, but I wanna show you the um, relationship with the Pythagorean theorem, how this holds true, okay? So which side is C? Well, what is the longest side? The longest side is five. So that's the most important part when you are working with the Pythagorean theorem is to make sure you understand what C is, okay? So C squared is going to be five squared. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug in these values. So uh, four can be A, and three can be B, or vice versa, but five must be C. Okay, so the Pythagorean um, theorem states that if we square 
uh, the sum the sum of the squares of the smaller size is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to be equal to 5 squared. So is this true? Well, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. 25 is equal to 25. Okay, so this is how we can check to see if a uh, triangle, the sides of a triangle, uh, you know, um, are indeed a, uh, the sides of a right triangle because we could just use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so kind of going back to our problem up here, uh, we can say, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this looks to be C, and this would be maybe A, and this would be B. So I can just go A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared and plug in these respective values into C if in fact they are equal to one another. And if they are, well, this is a right triangle, but we have an additional twist here because we are working with feet and inches. So you gotta know a thing or two about converting units of measure. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get into that part of the problem right now. So hopefully, you know, most of you already understood uh, the Pythagorean theorem, but if you did not know the Pythagorean theorem, well, you definitely would have known about it if you would have been subscribed to my channel for some time. I've been on YouTube for over 10 years. I have over 3,000 plus YouTube videos from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. But uh, if this is the first time, um, you know, that you encounter one of my math videos, well, thank you so much for dropping by. Hopefully, you're getting some value from this content. But anyways, I have a ton of content on my channel to help you out. And uh, But, uh, you know, really, this content is kind of like tutorials. But if you really want to learn math from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. But my channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable and interesting. Okay? And I'm trying to reach as many people as possible. But I can't do that without your support. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem now. So now that we understand we have the Pythagorean theorem to work with a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, what we need to do is get our a, b, and c values here. Now, it would be nice and easy if we just had feet, right? If it was like six feet, three feet, and four feet, but we have inches as well, and we're going to have to be very careful here. So there's a couple different ways we can go. You could... Uh, take um, six feet and convert it to inches, okay? So how uh, can we uh, take six feet and write it as inches? Well, hopefully you're saying, MS22 math man, just multiply by 12 because in one foot, there is 12 inches, okay? And I think most people would know how to do that, but we're gonna do something a little bit different here. We're going to uh, convert the inches, uh, just for the fun of it, uh, into feet. Okay, because we are going to be using a calculator, and this would be just good practice to converting units of measure. But you could choose to work in all inches. That's perfectly fine. So three uh, feet would be, what, 3 times 12. That's 36 plus 6. The, the amount of inches uh, would be, you know, when you add these up, this would be the amount of inches for this side. So you could have got, done that as well and still come to the same conclusion. But let's go ahead and practice working with the units of measure and let's uh, take a look at our sides. <clears throat> okay, so our first side here is A, and that's three feet, six inches. So six inches is what? Well, that's 0.5 of a foot, right? Because if there's 12 inches, okay, there's 12 inches in one foot, and we have six inches, we have what? Six out of 12, or one half of a, a foot, okay? But we can express this as a decimal because we're gonna be using our calculator. So one divided by two is 0.5. So three feet, six inches is equivalent to 3.5 feet. All right, so how about uh, four feet, nine inches, and six feet, three inches? Well, let's go ahead and convert those uh, inches into feet. And uh, let's go ahead and work on that right now. Okay, so we are going to convert nine inches and three inches respectively. And then we'll just add these to these four and six. But again, you could just uh, work in all inches. That'd be, uh, that's fine as well. Okay, so nine inches, how many um, feet is nine inches? So what we want to do is use a conversion factor. Okay, now this is going to work out to be nine over 12. Most of you be like, oh, I get that. But a conversion factor is a relationship that we know. That we know that one foot 
there's 12 inches in one foot. So a conversion factor we can write as one foot over 12 inches, or matter of fact, let me just kind of do it this way. So we know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. Now I'm explaining this because uh, you know this is a, this particular problem is pretty easy because we're working with feet and inches. Most people know this, but with other units of measure, people get confused, right? I know this because I've been doing this for many, many, many years. All right, so we can express our conversion factor this way. One foot, there's 12 inches. So we can write this as one foot to 12 inches. All right, that's one way to think about it. Or 12 inches to one foot. These are both correct. Okay, but we have to choose one of these, what we call conversion factors, and multiply by our nine inches. Now, uh, why are we choosing this one right here? One feet over nine, or one foot over 12 inches, and not 12 inches over one foot. Well, when we multiply fractions, you multiply the respective numerators and denominators. And here, what we want to do is get rid of the inches and be left with feet. So the inches are going to cross cancel, and we're going to be left with nine times one foot over 12, or nine over 12, which of course is uh, um, a fraction that would reduce to three fourths, which is the same thing as a decimal 0.75 feet. Okay. Now, if I use the other conversion factor, if I had inches up here and feet down here, well, the feet will not cross cancel with the inches. I would end up with inches squared, inches times inches, inches, inches squared. So I know I'm kind of really, you know, getting into how to convert units of measure, but this is a part of um, math, that all math and science, that a lot of people confuse. All right, so that's why I'm kind of doing it this way as a nice quick review. All right, so how about uh, three inches? How many feet is three inches? Well, we're going to use the conversion factor one foot to 12 inches, so the inches cross cancel, so that's going to be three times one. Remember, this is a fraction. Three times one is three over 12, and we can reduce three over 12 to one fourth, which is, of course, the same as a decimal 0.25 and this would be in feet. Now I'm using decimals because we are going to use our calculator when we uh, check for the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so here's our side. So three feet, six inches is the same thing as 3.5 feet. Four feet, nine inches is the same thing as 4.75 feet. And three feet, three inches is the same thing as 6.25 feet. Okay, so our triangle really is the following. Okay, so 6.25 feet on this side this side 3.5 feet, and this side 4.75 feet. Okay, so now we can go ahead and uh, use the Pythagorean theorem to check if this, uh, the square of this plus the square of this is equal to the square of this. And if it is, well, then this is a right triangle. And if it's not, okay, then it's not a right triangle. Now, again, just as a reminder, you could have worked with all inches and still came um, up with the same conclusion. So there's no rule that you have to work with feet or inches. All the units, though, do have to be the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the math right now. So we're going to plug in the sides into the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that uh, the key side is C, which is the longest side right here. So this would be C if this was a right triangle, but obviously this appears to be possibly a right triangle, so this has to be our C side. It's also the longest side. C will also be uh, the longest side of any right triangle. Okay, so this will be our C value, and this could be A, and this could be B. So let's go ahead and plug in this information in and see what we get. All right, so A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Well, let's see. So 4.75 squared plus 3.5 squared is this equal to 6.25 squared? When we do the number crunching, we're going to get 22.56 plus 12.5 um, for 3.5 squared. And 6.25 squared is 39.06. And when we add up the two smaller sides, we get 34.81. And now the question is, is 34.81 equal to 39.06? Well, it's close but it's not equal, okay? This has to be perfectly equal if this is a right triangle. So our conclusions is what? Well, no, this is not a right triangle because the sides do not have the relationship of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so hopefully you knew the answer to this question, and if you did not, no big deal. And, uh, you know, as I kind of indicated, there was different, there's like problems within problems uh, for this particular problem. And the one thing that I wanted to, again, stress is converting units of measure. That's a big, big deal in math and science. It absolutely 
need to understand how to convert units of measure. But hopefully this was an interesting little video. And if you need more help with geometry, basic geometry, the Pythagorean theorem or anything else, well, in terms of geometry, I offer a full complete geometry course. You can find a link to that in the description. But if uh, you, know, you just want to kind of learn some geometry from me and you're not a math student, then check out my math skills rebuilder course. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.